So this is Phil, and I want to thank everyone for coming and joining us today for the Magma Day event. Uh, we had a fabulous day throughout with presentations covering a range from Magma's uh, construction, how it's being used in various applications, how it's, it's uh, impacting the wireless business and being a foundation for a much broader uh, impact or collection of projects that LF is putting together uh, to support uh, wireless applications and the democratization of wireless worldwide. So I wanted to uh, give our speakers, uh, our key speakers, a bit of a last word. Um, there's also a Q&A chat available if anyone wants to come and join us for a closing Q&A. So uh, with that, I'll let Arpit uh, open things up. Arpit, anything that you want to close the day with or thoughts that you may have about the MAGMA project and what we've shared today? Uh, no, I think hopefully people who stayed on uh, really got some very deep insights, not just from the developers, but also from the users. And, uh, you know, while we have not explained all of the bits and bytes on how projects come together, uh, you know, we have the experts. If there's questions you can ask uh, on the live session uh, for sure. Um, obviously, you know, information is on, on the website. There is lots of projects putting everything together. The community is vibrant, let's put it this way. And, and 5G is here. And, you know, we're building on 4G, but it's a, for a whole different ecosystem. I know the cloud native community, right, uh, typically view, you know, this ecosystem as, you know, it's just a connection. What's the problem, right? Mm. Um, but there's a lot more uh, than just a simple workload, uh, whether it's a search or, you know, it's it's a social media search uh, connection, right? It, it's a very complex. But our goal is to open it, simplify it, automate it. And, and I think that's why you're seeing the traction specifically with industries like 5G coming on. So, you know, very excited to have all of you join and be part of this community. And, Amar and, and Shah, yeah. Yeah, and Ar Arpit, I'll, I'll add, I think the Magna community is super excited about joining LF and uh, working together with you and the other uh, LF networking and LF edge projects that we can together take uh, into a very comprehensive view of how to deploy networks in an open source manner. Yep. Uh, Amar, anything you'd like to add on our day today? Yeah, no, thank, thanks a lot for the opportunity uh, to talk here and also present some of our ideas. Uh, things that we want to highlight is that, you know, while CUPS has been uh, fairly well understood, uh, we'd like to think of Magma as an evolution on CUPS. So as part of that, you know, we're also going to be publishing a series of blogs as well as, you know, I think with the help of the LF edX platform, we're also putting together a high level introduction to Magma that gives an overview of a lot of these concepts. So all of that is going to be coming soon. So please stay plugged in with the community, and you know we'll we'll hopefully clarify a lot of these concepts. In the hey, 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 Philip, I I just got reminded that the session is starting at five fifty-five, so we might be a couple of minutes early. We may want to restart. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, 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 no problem. I yeah, I, it just gives people time to just like come between sessions and and get back. So. Uh, because I was wondering, you know, where's the Q&A and all. And now, you know, you can see that people are joined. So okay. what do you have to do? Like, do we have to get out and get in? No, no, no. We, we are fine. We're I think good. we're good. Uh, it's just the timing. We started a little bit early. So let's let's restart the whole thing. Sorry. Phil. <laughs> so for everyone who watched us rehearse our closing <laughs> session here, uh, apologies. Uh, I'm, I'm Phil, and I'm the... Magma community uh, manager, or community evangelist. And I wanted to thank everyone 
who took the time to join us today as we shared about uh, what's happening with the MAGMA project. And we were able to share a very broad range of views about MAGMA, uh, starting with a developer's insight uh, from Amar and some directions we're going with Brian, uh, a number of, I think, very interesting user views and lightning talks and an insightful thought on how MAGMA fits into a larger ecosystem of projects uh, being put together by LF to, to develop a much more comprehensive view of how you can bring open source software and systems to support wireless networks going forward and provide the foundation for an open source 5G ecosystem. Uh, I wanted to take a minute and remind everyone here that we do have a Q&A uh, chat up. And if anyone wants to put questions for our closing speakers there, we'd love to address them for you. Uh, and while we wait for that, I'll let each of our speakers take a turn uh, to summarize their thoughts and give any closing comments for the day. And we can uh, start with Arpit. Uh, thank you. So I think, uh, first of all, we're very excited that you took the time to look at the, uh, the Magma project in general. Uh, I think the, the interesting thing is, uh, if you look at network telecom in general, from an end-to-end -end perspective, you have the core, you have the edge, and you have the access. And a lot of the core in terms of the infrastructure has already opened up. Uh, through projects under LF networking, uh, specifically as 5G requires network automation. Uh, Edge is opening up in terms of open source. Open RAN is there now to enable the RAN and disaggregation. So one of the big uh, missing pieces were the mobile core or the backend core as we call it. And uh, while the cloud community is quite uh, you know, eager to help on this, it does bring in a lot of complexities historically because of brownfield deployments and things like that. So our goal with Magma and with Magma as part of the overall uh, integrated solutions as part of uh, LF projects is to make it simple, uh, make it open, make it automated, and you know, please help us get there. And if you want to participate, it's Magma's website. I think we've mentioned it in several of the chats, <laughs> as well as uh, pulling magma into an end-to-end -end ecosystem through what is called uh, 5g super blueprints mm -hmm. um which is uh, which is an initiative under lf networking so you can join there as well and participate but that's kind of where bulk of the ecosystem players are, are pulling it all together and we're really excited and uh you know of, the, of this vibrant community thanks harpit amar any closing thoughts uh, and again one more reminder the q a chat is open if anyone wants to uh, bring a question to to our conference hosts. Amar? Awesome. Uh, th thanks, everybody. And thank you for the opportunity to uh, you know present at uh, Magma Day. So a couple of things I just wanted to wrap up on is, uh, so the first one is that you know uh, CUPS is a fairly well understood architecture. And so what we're trying to do with Magma is a bit of an evolution on CUPS. Uh, it's almost like taking a lot of the principles that have proven out in the data center with like hierarchical control planes and you know marrying it into a sort of a cups framework. And that is a fairly fundamental evolution in terms of how the architecture is going to look like going forward. So uh, while this is uh, a new concept, uh, we hope to you know put out a few blogs as well as you know uh, also there's a introduction to magma course that is going to be available uh, sometime in june through the linux foundation edx platform that clarifies a lot of these concepts and so uh, please stay tuned and continue to follow us on magmacore.org uh, we'll have a lot more um, you know articles around this new architectural evolution that we're trying to propose and lastly, uh, the a plug for the 5G side. Uh, so 5G is in active development. Uh, in fact, we've just sort of aligned on scope for a lot of the slicing functionality that we're going to introduce into the Magma 5G uh, code base. So this is a great place for folks to contribute, as well as you know, uh, a great way to stay engaged with the community, uh, as Shah mentioned uh, in the new enterprise sort of use cases that are also coming up. So thanks again, uh, and hope to see you on Slack and Magma Core. Thanks, Amar. 
Uh, Brian, any closing thoughts you want to share with us? Uh, just a couple. Uh, I'll note that um, we think, in addition to what Amara mentioned, one of Magma's neat differentiations is its ability to run at the access edge for telcos or all the way at the user edge in the case of decentralized wireless networks. We think both of those are pretty innovative and differentiating versus alternatives. We'd like to invite everyone to please join the community and help build your projects on Magma. If you're uh, looking to resell uh, Magma as part of a broader solution, um, the project's uh, designed for that, and, and we'd love to welcome you to do so. If you're an academic researcher, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, emerging standards and supports for, for new use cases coming in 5G. And we see those showing up first in open source. So it's, a, it's another great way to get involved. And so, uh, like Omar mentioned, we uh, look forward to seeing you on Slack and in the community. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Brian. We, we really uh, would love to have people come join us on this journey with Magma. And Shaw, the last word. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, been exciting. And thank you for the opportunity. Just like all of you are uh, uh, saying, I really don't have much to add uh, on top of that. Phil's great job in moderating throughout the day. Uh, great presenters. My, my heartfelt thanks to all the Magma uh, participants today. Um, Arpit, um, always, I, I watch your talks, but connects the end to end. A challenge. Every time I think about you, I think about like how it's not just about the core or not just about the edge. We talk about end to end, which is very, very um, you know, refreshing. And uh, Amar, definitely the 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 cups evolution. I sometimes call that cups 2.0, which is uh, we hope that it what the future of the cellular networks are going to look like, and not just a cellular. Well, as the cellular technologies get more and more into the enterprise side supporting consumer networks and so on. I think it's just going to evolve in that direction. And uh, Brian, obviously, the edge, edge is a clear part of that. So thank you for all the great call outs. And last but not the least, those who attended the sessions today, I hope that you found the sessions worth your time and you have some takeaways from these sessions. Right? And it's a developer community, so there is no point in uh, making a marketing or a product pitch here. I think what's would be the best, just echoing everybody, is that come and join us um, and you know GitHub or Slack. Join us, watch it from the sideline, and when you see there's something interesting and exciting for you, participate and start contributing. There's a lot of excitement, uh, that, I mean, exciting things that are happening. Uh, as Amar pointed out, there are some slicing stuff from the 5G perspective. Uh, there are all these different network models uh, that are coming up. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's my biggest say that, you know, don't, don't uh, yeah, hopefully you're just not going to just watch it from the industry, from outside. You're going to come in and join us and contribute. There's a lot of interesting things that you can, you can hopefully uh, uh, take away and hopefully there, there are impacts you can make uh, at the industry level. That's all. I appreciate, once again, the time taken to, 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 to watch these sessions. That's all, Phil. So, Shaw, just as you started talking, I, a question came in from Prakash, which is, do you see the possibility of tr trying the 5G edge deployments with blueprints to get some sizing numbers for the hardware and software? And I know I promised you the last word, but I think I'll toss that question back to Amar uh, or Brian to see uh, how we might respond to that. Please do. Thank you. Amar? Sure. Um, yeah, so I, the, the, uh, as Arpit already commented, yeah, so a lot of the end-to-end -end blueprint uh, is about dimensioning and integration interfaces. And so what we're actually working with, uh, you know, the LFH team as well as the Acrino blueprint is precisely around that. Yeah, in parallel, there are other uh, community members like Canonical who are also trying to offer uh, magma on their infrastructure. And so that is a parallel dimensioning exercise that we're also undertaking with, with both uh, Canonical and, and AWS. So uh, the key takeaway here is that everyone has a slightly different like forwarding plane. And so, you know, a lot of this dimensioning has to happen within the context of the solution that magma is running on. So uh, 
well the uh, nuts and bolts look similar the actual like uh, sizing would be a little different yeah. thanks Amar and with that uh, I want to offer a heartfelt thank you to everyone who came and shared their morning or afternoon with us depending on where you're at in the world and uh, thank you to our speakers and the hosts that you have here and hope everyone has a fabulous remainder of your day and enjoy the rest of the uh, KubeCon CNCF event the remainder of this week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Phil. Great job. Thank you.